Uh, it's my pleasure to be here and uh, happy birthday, Transila. And as, a, as a, a parent, I'm proud. And I'm proud that together with Matthias and uh, two other guys, we established this uh, very famous and outstanding company now. And um, it comes from the university, and we all together work here in Stuttgart University. And as uh, Wolfgang mentioned, I'm a mechanical engineer, and by the way, I'm the dean of a department of architecture at the moment. Yeah? You can imagine how the things are coming together. Yeah? A dean of architecture is a mechanical engineer. And uh, it's, it's really one of my destiny to teach people. And um, um, energy design and sustainable built environment. What are the driving forces? And, and let me say excuse at the beginning, I looking from the from the from the classes of a guy from from Europe, and of course uh, the world is pickle in Europe. We know that we heard in the morning that there is a lot of other other uh, um, driving forces. But um, um, on these first pictures, you see there is not only one one uh, driving forces or one driving change. There is a, a bunch of all these influences, the climate, the policy, demonstration, lighthouse projects, emotion, yeah, emotion, the people, a lot of projects also, maybe you and I, we, we, we built because we had a man, a woman, a, a, in the opposite of you, and this guy would like to have this, this project. And otherwise, we could never come to, uh, to, to, to this project. And, and one of the uh, things is that the, the most, I'm, I'm thinking that the world is driven by money and the world is driven by economy. And um, of course, the, the, lower, the lower two things, the research and the education. This is my, what I said, this is my destiny and to bring this in the reality, in the practice. This is, this is a real challenge to, to build uh, future green buildings or reliable buildings. Uh, and uh, what are the, I'm starting in the 70s, you see that on my hair, um, that in the 70s, in Germany, nobody think on solar. And you see on this left side, on these small pictures there, this was our first, first test facility. And then the first solar houses by Philips and by uh, Professor Burr in the United States, was the, this was my starting as a young, young uh, uh, mechanical engineer who would like to work on, on solar. And um, of course, the driving forces was the oil price and all this crisis, you know. And then comes the, the influence of, of, um, of the climate change, also in the 70s. And then in the 80s, um, and then Matthias came. Yeah? Remember Matthias, we, we're doing this passive solar, we're doing active solar, and, and we trying to build buildings. Um, I'm sorry for the architecture for that, but this was the, <laughs> this was the thinking in this time. And, um, and, and what we learned, and this is very important, I not hear so much in the morning about that or during the day, is we evaluate our projects. You can do a lot of design, you have a lot of your ideas, otherwise you show in, in your mist going around this facade. I, I would like to evaluate these buildings. And because I see a lot of so-called green, and our buildings also not works as we sometimes simulate, right, Matthias? Uh, so, but we learned how to evaluate, and this was in this 80s. And this 80s, we learned that a building should also be, let's say, in the operation. We should stay as engineers, as architects during the operation, and we learn is a kind of a circle. We're doing things, we learn things, come back to new approaches, and this is a kind of a circle. And um, this, this, this would like uh, to show you that, that uh, there is at the beginning, let's say, a driving force, like maybe the world, the, the climate and the money, of course, is a driving force, and then comes the research, and after the research, maybe we do some lighthouse project, and maybe then, uh, the policy makes some rules, makes some laws, makes some ordinance for this. And so always what we learn, the laws are always a little bit behind all our research work. This is what we learned, especially in Europe. And then maybe comes the, the emotion and the economy and say, oh yes, this is, a, this is a technology, we go in the market. So this is how I understand our 90s and then comes, oh yeah, this is a very nice picture. This is a picture who shows uh, the happiness of a society depending on the R&D budget uh, as percentage of the GDP. This is an interesting uh, uh, diagram. It shows that, uh, look, for example, here in Germany, we have nearly 3% of our uh, GDP is put the German uh, policy in the R&D. And this means, you see, German, the Germans are a little nearly happy, and this is the reason that we have a nice research budget. And this, as a researcher, I like that. So uh, maybe this could be 
let's say, force that we should put more money in research. Maybe this gives more happiness. Um, and then in the 90s, in the 90s, what we learned in the 90s, driving forces, because we we, we, we starting with, let's say, solar, who make 10%, 15% of the whole contribution of a building. And then we, we learned also from our guys from north of Europe, from Sweden and Denmark, that we have to have bigger, higher solar contribution. And this was the driving force. The driving force where we would like to have cities or small cities or buildings with higher solar contribution. And how we get higher co solar contribution? We need storage, because we know that we in summer the sun and in winter we need the heating. So this, this was the reason we built in this time, and also this time uh, Matthias was still, yeah, was you still there? Yes, you were still there, I think, uh, uh, in, the, in the ITW, in University of Stuttgart, and we, we built such, uh, let's say, cities like Hamburg, uh, Friedrichshafen, and so on, and we built some huge storages. But um, we learned that the price goes down if we bigger build a building, and if we bigger, bigger build a system. This is a, a, a simple technical law, if you're bigger, if you're cheaper. Um, and um, then it comes also some breaking of change or some uh, breaking forces. And these breaking forces was still the fossil fuel was too cheap. Yeah, we're always fighting against the fossil fuels. Then we had um, in Germany no more huge settlements was built. We have to go normally to China and build these systems. But we had not the money and not the plane who uh, go so quick to, to, uh, to China in these in this years. This was, in, this was in the 90s. And um, also we had some operational problems or the operational performance in these huge big storages was we built in the first in the research part. So these first things was, you see this on this diagram, this was these different uh, big uh, storages we built. And you see the planning, the design, under simulation and under our design tools. But the measurement was less as we expected. But this is what I learned much, much later on, just the same in buildings, by the way. A lot of people, as you also build a lot of buildings, believe me, this building's not working as you think. This building's working maybe twice or three times, not in this performance. And also our solar systems works not as it was uh, designed, but this is lessons learned and we, the next generation will be better. And due to that, I, have a, I get a strong time um, a schedule. Uh, maybe I, I, ship, uh, I ship one of the other slides. But um, after all these discussions, in Germany what happened that the, the, the German government um, increased, go one back, or go yeah, one back, that we, this curve is interesting. This curve shows you the research work on buildings. This is the heating demand of a building in Germany. And it's, you see the research is this line. We're coming down, 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 and nearly end of, uh, or close to the, to, to 2000, we, we built nearly in the research zero heating energy house, whatever this means. And the, the, the government, the law or, or the ordinance, they comes down in these steps, stop, bop, bop, and they follow, let's say, the research, maybe 10, 15 years later. And then the, the real practice, this is the curve for the real practice. This is the construction practice, it was under the law, but it was much above the research what is possible. And now in the newer days, we have a big question mark if this really going ahead that this reduction of the law is now really on a, on, a, on a level where what we need is the future. We need that we have the observation of the buildings. We have to evaluate and to, to, to look to the real, real performance of the building in the practice because we can come down, 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 but the building will not operate as our laws will, 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 um, will perform. So... Um, uh, come, green labeling. I remember I came back from the States, let's say maybe end of, uh, uh, no, mid of 2005, and in, in, in America was lead established, and in Germany we have no labeling. And, uh, and I still have a big question as an engineer if this really brings us ahead, but it's, 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 it's a good, let's say, um, it's a good, um, how you say, a good book, or it's a good, it's a good line to, to follow these, these steps of this labeling of a building. This is what engineers normally have to do, but now we have a booklet where we can check how we should go. But if it's, if it's really solved the world problems, I have a big question mark uh, behind, because they're not checking the operation, or the, if the building is finished, the green labeling are normally not check how the building really performed in the first two, three years. And uh, there I have a, have a big question mark if really, is this a driving uh, force or not. 
But the real driving force was this one. This was now a, a success story. The su success story was the, the, gov the German governments um, established in the year 2000 the called Renewable Energy Source Act. And this Renewable Source Act was that we get money, but we feed, we feed uh, solar uh, electricity in the grid. This feed-in tariff policy was a tremendous success. A tremendous success in Germany, because what you see in this, in this line, this was the feed-in tariff. It comes over the years down, 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 down. And um, uh, this is the, the, the electricity cost of the grid. And you see, we, we thought it will be 2015 or 2020 that the net parity will be reached, but it was much quicker. And of course, quicker was because the, come. And it was the reason that the success story of electrical photovoltaic or elect use electricity by photovoltaic, the success story was this one, you see this on this picture. The cost comes down of a factor of eight. The cost comes down of a factor of eight. The solar thermal only takes a factor of two. So, and this was, and now we had a big challenge between, let's say, solar heating by solar thermal collectors or by solar photovoltaic by via heat pump. There's a big challenge now. And this challenge and also solar cooling, also we engineers, remember we, we starting with hot water absorption cooling. Forget that. Forget it. Because uh, the electricity comes so cheap from the roof now, you can cool direct your building in the desert of, I don't know where, in, in your country maybe. Uh, but this is, this is unbelievable how this change of costs influence our technology. And um, you see that in the, opla, in, the next, in the next slide. This is the actual situation. The actual situation is this one. The cost of photovoltaic drops dramatically down. And we have now uh, a net parity nearly, let's say, now in 2012, we have a net parity. And, and this is, is a revolution, from my point of view, a revolution for the future energy supply of, based on solar. So um, 30 years after, uh, later, as I started in solar, what, was, what is, has happened? Or what, what is uh, now the driving change, or the, or the drivers of change? Um, if this is a city of sustainability, I have a big question mark. Every one of, of you know the city. And um, I don't know who was the city planner, but I like your buildings much more, your ones much more as these buildings. These buildings are nearly only a kind of a symbol of power or a symbol of money. But I will, I will ask maybe 30 years after if these are buildings are not, if these buildings are still there. I don't know how they survive. Um, and um, in, the, in the German government was this uh, decision on how to go ahead with nuclear power change energy policy. This was in 2010. And the, 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 the German change in, in energy policy um, was, we call it the energy turn around 2011, the so-called Energiewende. And this have, from my point of view, and this is, a, 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 let's say, a very, in, very interesting, maybe compared to other countries, a clear objective. Germany gives a clear objective what we will reach 2020 and what we will reach 2050. And my time is running out, and so I um, would like to say only I, I'm I will not reach 2050, I think. Uh, but uh, I hope that we now this all what we all what we uh, uh, what we established and, and it will be it will be growing and growing because you see the the part of renewable energy will be 2050 is our objective. 60 percent of the en energy should be covered by by renewables, and this gives this makes my heart. Uh, uh, or my heart uh, uh, going warm when I, when I see this decision from the political side. So let me go very quick to the end. The end, the, the, no, there's the wrong direction here. So this one. So, yeah, what we need and what I learned is called lighthouse projects. You see one of my one, my private one, this is my private house, and this house producing more energy as it use and is totally, let's say, um, very, very, it's a very, let's say, reduced architecture. I, I call it architecture and engineering in harmony. 
it's, uh, it's fully on electricity because I believe only the future will be electricity, 100%, it's my opinion. And so the electric car, the building, and it's a lighthouse project from my point of view, and it will be, and the next step are lighthouse uh, uh, cities like Essling and Smart City is under construction. And finally, let me say finally, education, this is my destiny, research, transfer and praxis, human in focus, these are some words, and we need a cultural change. And I would like to say on this, uh, on this point, in this we have to export, I will skip all the other slides, uh, this I will export, and I think Transola is one of the, let's say, the carrier to export this in the world. Because in Germany we can do a lot, but the last picture I have, I have a last picture. No, it's the wrong direction. Always the wrong direction. So, you see, Germany is only, let's say, 1%, maybe in the future, less than 1% on this all, let's say, global uh, approach. And this was my last picture. And this is uh, what I think. We, we, we Germans and we German engineers, we European engineers, we have to go around and we have to go to help this, um, this, this, this education of, or this application of sustainable buildings and sustainable cities. And Transola is one of the successful, that and what I would like to say, you Transa, keep all your visions and all the best for the future. This is my vision. My vision for you and for your company, Matthias, and, your, and the whole group of Transola. Thank you.